Are you looking to pick up a fermenter? Well, today we're going to have the review of Anvil's 7.5 gallon stainless bucket. Welcome back. So we did a like little preview of this, of like putting it together and all that, but I wanted to do a full review of it, tell you guys how I like it. So, um, so off the bat, I can absolutely say, you know, this thing is so much better than using a racking cane and a wide mouth bubbler or a bucket or something like that. Now, obviously it's gonna come down to preference of what you like. Uh, but for me, I got to say it was so much easier because there is a racking arm in there. You can change, you can rotate the ball valve and it'll actually move the racking arm in there to the level. So that way you don't have to worry about if you got a big mouth bubbler, bubbler or a glass car boy standing there and holding the racking cane. If you don't have one of those clips, I don't have the clip. Um, but yeah, it, it did work out well. Um, at first, uh, I did have a little bit of trouble because I couldn't tell where the racking arm is in there. Um, now, obviously, I think when you put this together, when your ball valve is um, horizontal, like you want it, when you tighten everything on the inside, you wanna make sure that that racking tube is down straight down then you can turn it um but also i couldn't tell you know where the level level of the tube was so at the start i did open it just a tiny bit and start turning it so i did get some yeast and trube and all that stuff in the keg but um after you find out that position um you can just keep turning it up um i'll throw up a little video while i'm talking of the uh, Bell's Hop Slam clone that I just got out of this. But yeah, so that works. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, make sure that that racking tube, racking arm is pointed straight down. I could see if you had four or five of these and you weren't careful, you know, you might be actually turning that arm down into the tube. So make sure they're all point down and to the level that you want. Um, lid worked well. Uh, I love it. Uh, easy to open, get samples from, or add dry hops, or, you know, if you're going to use this for secondary, for whatever, uh, uh, oak chips, um, maybe if you were making an IPA and you wanted to put uh, coconut in there, you could throw it in there or put it in a bag, uh, whatever you wanted, it's pretty easy. Um, I did have a lot of questions um, on, about this on the, the preview of it, and I just wanted to show it does have a gasket that's inside the lid. So that is one good thing. I know some people were asking me, is it metal on metal? No, it is, uh, I'm guessing a silicone uh, gasket that does go around there. And then um, you just use the clamps on the side to clamp it down. Then when you need to get in there, unclamp them, pull it up and you're set. Um, in making the Bell's Hop Sam clone, um, this thing is light and easy to carry. Uh, when I was transferring it from um, the brew kettle to this, I just ran a cord and you can uh, actually, or a tube, you can actually see it in there uh, to the top hole of this and just put it in there so that way um, that whole entire top wasn't open. Uh, it would almost be like if you had a glass carboy and you're gonna run your tube, uh, depending on how you do it into that, that's pretty much what I did here. So I did um, s tighten this or put all the clamps on there and let it drain in. Now obviously when I got it to my basement where I ferment them, I had to take the lid off to aerate and do all that. But for the most part, easy to carry down the stairs. Uh, usually what I do with my regular carboys or my big mouth bubbler is I put them in a old milk crate, uh, plastic crate, and that's how I carry them. And that's kind of 
hard to do sometimes because you're carrying it farther up here so it's against your shoulder or something like that where these handles you're kind of carrying it in between you um, obviously you don't want to bend over too much and hurt yourself or fall downstairs but i did like that um, the uh the thermometer or tape thermometer um, did work well. Um, I'm gonna try it with using my heating blanket, they call it, that just wraps around the outside. Uh, see how well that does. For this time, it was fine. I wrapped it in a blanket and I actually opened the vent. Um, so that stayed. Uh, everything was cool. And like I said at the beginning, when it was time to transfer to the, the keg, just turn the ball valve. I do not think I had the ball valve open all the way at any point. Um, even once the keg was filled a little where it wasn't squirting over, I still think I kept it about halfway, three quarters of the way open. Um, I did buy a half inch uh, hose to go on the end of the barb. Um, and before I started, I just unscrewed it. I don't have the, the barb with me because uh, that's drying, but um, I just took that off. I did squirt uh, sanitizer up in there um, with it closed because obviously you don't want to do it with it open because it's not going to go up there. But I did do that and I put it back on. Then I uh, put my hose on there. Um, the only downside I think kind of is I would say your bungs. Now, because this is stainless steel, this edge on here is kind of sharp. That's in the top where you put your bung. And I did notice when I went to get my bung out that it's cut. There are cuts in it to, from trying to pull it out. Now, is that bad? Some might say yes, some might say no. The only thing I can think of, make sure you sanitize it well, because now that there's cuts in there, um, your you know bacteria or something could get in there so when you go to do your next brew and if you don't sanitize this really well and put it in there and it goes beyond that point you are you could contaminate your beer but um i would say uh, i'll try and put a picture but they are some pretty uh deep cuts in there i would say i mean i can see it through there um but I wouldn't say it's too big of a deal, but just make sure you're careful when you pull these out. I don't know what they could do. The only thing I could think of is putting a uh, rubber seal around there uh, somehow so that way it didn't cut them. Um, but overall, it worked well. It bubbled. It's fine. I'll keep using the same one to see if it keeps cutting into that when I pull it out or if maybe Anvil has a way, maybe I'll get in touch with them to see how they suggest you take these bungs out because I did try to pull straight up on it and that wasn't working, so I did kind of move it to the side. Um, the other thing I like about uh, this bung um, or this hole verse like a uh, glass carboy or a big mouth bubbler is when you put it in there it's going to stay um, i'm sure if you've brewed enough beers or brewed a beer in a glass carboy you'll know what i'm talking about usually when you put the bung down in there it keeps on creeping out and if you want to dry it off you can but again you could contaminate something over time um, but yeah I'm happy with it. I would buy more. I probably will buy more. Easy to clean after the the Hop Slam uh, clone was done. I put it in water. Um, I use OxyClean for everything instead of PBW. I put some in there, swirled it up with hot water, washed the whole thing off. Everything came off, then I soaked it in sanitizer. Um, also, the thing I like about this is you can take this whole entire ball valve um, and racking cane out and clean all that, then you can just put it back together. Again, I wish they would have an option for a half inch three piece ball valve just so you could pull everything apart, but hey, this will work for now. So let me know if you guys have any comments and until next time, happy brewing.
If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and thumbs up and check out some of our other videos.